I am going to talk about what I do on a daily basis. You know, when Josh and I had begun in this business, um, like he said, we, we began wholesaling. We had to learn at a very early stage what a good property was and what it wasn't because, quite frankly, you're not going to make any money because somebody that's good at buying an advanced investor is not going to buy uh, a property that's not a good deal. So we learned our markets very well. And then as we built the companies, uh, we, like Josh said, we actually took uh, called a sabbatical from wholesaling probably for a couple of years to really build out Atlas Property Management. And then it wasn't until the, um, the one client came over and I said, hey, man, we know how to do this. And now we have all the pieces. We have the construction. We have the management company. We got pretty good at all of them. And then we said, let's start wholesaling again, but let's do it differently this time. And that's really where Turnkey came in. And then I stayed inside of the management company. It just suits my personality more. Um, it's probably an understatement that I get a little intense about time and certain things. And I get my life works well when everything is in order. Um, and if it's not, the office will feel it because I have, you know, property management is designed to have a lot of moving parts. Okay. And it suits me well. And Josh does really well in the, in the turnkey side of it. Some of my clients in here are looking at me nodding their heads going, yep, I know, you know, sometimes when Ian gets like that and I, I can get pretty directed forward, but I really always have the best intentions in mind of the portfolio we're dealing with. And I'm always speaking from a position of experience when we've dealt with so many clients over the years that Josh said, like we see them, the ones that succeed and the ones that fail. And I just want to like jump out of my skin sometimes and tell people and shake them and be like, this isn't going to work. Um, or this is great. This is what you want to do. This is, this is fantastic. So we just see it and through so much experience of seeing the sample sizes and looking at the data and understanding why it does and doesn't succeed. Um, but ultimately that whole product that leads up in turnkey is going to come to this and it's going to come to what I do in, in Atlas property management. Um, and it comes down to the person that's being placed in that house is the person that is driving your income and your monthly cash flow. That's it. I mean, we can make this as complicated as it wants to sound, but really, if you bought right, you leverage correctly, or you, know, you have the right amount of equity in the property and the person is paying, you're okay. It's when one of those things doesn't fit in, you have an eviction, you have this, and you've got to, which comes back to buying, right? You stomach those downturns because every portfolio has a blip. Uh, a blip and you know, I've, some of these people I'm looking around, they're my clients, I know. I've said I've seen your portfolio when it's great and I've seen when it has a blip. Here's the one thing we haven't been able to figure out. We don't know why port certain portfolios, it's, it never seems to be, let's take one of my clients, let's just say they have 10 properties. For whatever reason, there's usually a stretch of years where everything just is okay, there's some bumps, there's some bruises, and then like a light switch. It's four evictions and four things go out. And, and, with, and we have not been able to pin down those management clients. And we actually built turnkey to avoid um, the clients that come from turnkey as opposed to the um, third party clients that contact me and say, hey, I'd like you to manage my property because they're not in turnkey. And I don't know if it's the repairs that weren't done right. I don't know if it's just an anomaly that you just have to stomach just like a stock. A stock is not always going to go up, right? 2008 showed us that that's not the case. You don't, you know, so you kind of see it like a portfolio. So I'm going to come back to this slide, which is placing the residents. And sometimes one of those dips that you have just happen to be evictions. And man, we do everything we can to look at the right people that we're putting in. And there's certain little tricks of the trade that we have at this point that are telltale signs because I don't want to deal with an eviction. I don't want to tell you that we have to do an eviction. I don't want to do that. I want to give you good news and I want to deliver you a check every month and you're happy, I'm happy. But the truth of the matter is and what I do in this business, I have to notify you. If somebody has to be evicted, it has to happen. Um, so we do everything we can to prevent that to the best that we can. And we have a very, very low eviction rate relative to the t uh, size of our portfolio, but we still strive to better that um, and it really starts here, which is placing tenants. So one of the things we originally did, we said, what are we good at in this business? We are really good at management and understanding processes and implementing them inside of our offices. Great. Well, leasing really isn't that beast. It's not the same thing. People always ask me every day, I get the calls, do you do leasing and management, leasing and management? My answer is yes, but I'm not really doing the leasing. What we did was we partnered with Philly Apartment Company, which is a pretty good company in the center of the city. In fact, they're probably the biggest leasing company in the entire city. And our partners got along really well with their partners. And we decided, look, we're good at management. We're experts in management. You're experts in leasing. Why are we trying to do things that we're not experts in? And um, to the stake of, it costs us money to do this for the betterment of our clients. We were making money in leasing, but I said, we're not the best at this. It's better for our clients 
to do it with them. So we actually took a, a fantastic agent of ours, and I was just uh, talking um, to Sonny and Saki earlier about Angela. She's, she's a really great agent. Um, and we kind of made a hybrid between the two companies. And she does all of the leasing with them. And in fact, we became such a force in their company, we, do, we are the majority of their company now in terms of the leasing that they actually do. But that is all she does. She's an expert in that. And she knows when she comes to me, she will not place somebody, she knows right away, she does not want to call me, she does not want me to call her, I'm sorry, in a month and say, that tenant you just placed moved out. That will drop her heart because she wants the person to be there for the next 10 years and she takes tons and tons of pride in what she does. So we're looking at certain things um, that can, like, as Josh said earlier, like the extensive marketing. The reason we really focus on certain things like pricing right in a market is we, it's not because I want to rent your property for a low price. It's because I want to get it just in the right price range for the marketing that we have to have the most amount of people come through that property because it's just a numbers game. If you have the most amount of people coming through, eventually you're going to have somebody who's better than the other person. If you're trying to squeeze blood from a stone and you're trying to make somebody work who had three evictions, but they, you know, oh, they have a sob story and this, that, and the other, and that's your only option and you go with it, what do you think is going to happen in three months? You're becoming the fourth eviction. That's what it is. So we try to avoid that at all costs. And there's other things we look at like, um, Actually, I'm not sure how much I could say on, on camera, but um, <laughs> there are certain things that we look at that we're very particular to. And we know when there's red flags and when there's not and why. We do full background checks on everything because I just don't, I, I just always tell owners, I will not play somebody because I don't want the phone call in two months. Like, do, if you don't want to do business with us, fine. I don't care. I don't, I'd rather your portfolio do the right thing than have to deal with an argument with you in a couple months and you get mad at us or something. So by all means, I always try to do that. Um, oh, actually, no, I guess. <laughs> So we do, some of the things we do screen and some of the particulars we have are the income, the credit score, the criminal background, prior rental history. And it's not just a number on a page when we're looking at this either. Like it's never perfect. Nobody's ever perfect on paper. So what you have to do, and I advise this, I advise this to anybody in the room that maybe doesn't use this for management and has their own properties. When something doesn't add up on paper when you're doing the background check, there's a reason. So dig. Figure out why. So I'm looking at something, let's say you have a bad credit score. Okay, why is your credit score bad? Is it because you have medical bills or f you know, maybe some phone uh, bills you didn't pay five or six years ago and then there was a good track record beyond that? Great, you're not that bad. You know, even though your credit score might reflect it and you have the cash in the bank and something else offsets it to make it make sense. If you have a house repossession, you just got thrown out of the house and you know, your car is about to be repossessed and your credit score is the same as the person for whatever reason as the person who had the bad phone bill, um, you're not, it's not the same. It's not the same thing. You need to dig and see why the background check may be coming up the way it is. So it's beyond just the numbers when we're looking at it. And um, you know, our agent, uh, we've, well, but the agent that we use primarily is, um, she knows it. She knows what we're looking for. And that's really important coming over from Turnkey because the end product is going right here. And this is where it comes down to. Um, the other thing we have, which is really nice, and especially in the center of Philly, the best eviction attorney in the city also is the same guy that designed our lease. So when he sees it back in that courtroom, we don't lose, okay? Um, not very often, but it's very nice to be legally protected by, and there's no question, this guy is the best, bar none, at what he does. Um, and we, ha we hired him for a reason. So the lease that he prepared for us, we, we, never, uh, we never seem to run into problems when we get there. It always seems to be handled, to say the least. Does anybody have any questions about this part of the process? Because it's a pretty important one, and I know anybody that's not intern here, not a management client, probably experiences some things here, and I'd be happy to answer some questions on it. This might be a little on the side. Yeah. Right? When it comes to criminal background checks, mm -hmm. fair housing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if someone's been charged but not convicted, can you still use that to screen people out? It's kind of a gray area, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably a gray area that I'll answer with you later. Oh, with the cameras. That's right. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I could say this, I, uh, char somebody's character is very important to me, and in that, I just got to leave it at that. Somebody's character is very important to me, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, you got it. Ultimately, it's the decision of the property owner. Yeah. I, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, like Josh says, it's ultimately the owner's decision whether they go in. It's their property, ultimately. Um, I can tell you from experience what we're thinking and what we recommend if you ever have any questions, but we certainly consider all that stuff because it's just, 
you know, when you do something a thousand times, whatever you guys do for your day jobs, if you're pretty good at it, you've had it for years, you see things coming so far down the road at whatever you're doing that it's not because you're some magician in what you do. I'm not a genius. Josh isn't a genius. We've just done this so much that all of a sudden all those red flags pop up a mile away that somebody that's not experienced that, it just didn't see it. And then bang, you get blindsided, you learn your lesson. Hopefully it wasn't expensive. And you go to the next one. So um, going back to what Josh said, we can give you strong recommendations based on experience, but you know, um, it's a little bit of a, an interesting uh, slide to talk about. Um, let me see. Ian? Yes. Last question. Yeah. How do you handle um, personnel with military orders that are coming and going? It's interesting. Um, I've had a couple. Um, not many. It's very rare, actually. And it's, there's, unfortunately, we're hand if somebody's leaving the personnel, military, you can't do anything. They're out. Um, and it's one of those things that you're like, you're breaking the lease and from the stamp, I mean, I support the military, so I, like, it's, I don't give them a hard time. I say, hey, let's, let's wrap this up the way it's supposed to be wrapped up. Um, ultimately, a government order is a government order. You can't do anything. Uh, it's, it's, a weird, it's an interesting question. I've probably happened like, over the hundreds and, or thousands of leases that we've dealt with two or three times. It's very rare. Uh, we're not in like a pocket where, I know there's, um, there's that base in the Northeast that you might run into that a little bit, but it's not like an integral part of like, what, what the areas we're dealing in. Good question, though. Anybody else have any questions about that? Okay. Yeah. Um, how, how long does it take in order to get a tenant in? Is there an mm -hmm. um, average? Yeah, there is. So, time of year is important. We're in a nice time of year right now. It lasts right up through July-ish. Uh, the market's also strong right now. Um, typically, like November, December, it slows down. People just aren't moving in on Christmas. But you know, April to July is really good, especially when people have their tax income returns. They have the money to put down and so forth. Um, so, say the end of your question again, just so I can. I just wanted to know if there was a duration of time average for getting a to move in. Yes. So if we're priced right, and that's what I always say to owners. I said if we're priced right, in the right time of year, you're two to four weeks to find somebody good, on average, and then two to four weeks before they give the proper notice and move in. Now sometimes it's sooner, sometimes it's hey I've been looking, I'm just moving, but that's what we find the average to be is two to four weeks to find the right person, two to four weeks until they move in, pending your price rate. Because I have some owners that I've dealt with in the past that just won't come off their price, and I'm like I'm telling you like. We gauge our activity level based on the price. If it's priced right, you can't beat our marketing. At two or 300 leads a day for residents, we're everywhere. So if we're getting the right price range, we're going to get the leads accordingly. If we're out of the right price range, you're trying, you know, you can, I tell people, your house can be made of gold and you can be asking whatever you want. You can ask, I, I tell them I'll list at a million dollars a month. You will never get a call, no matter what you want. It's the same thing, though, literally, if you're just 100 bucks higher or just 200 bucks higher. The concept is the exact same to the market, whether it's a million or 200 bucks. So finding that sensitive price range is really important. And then you're two to four weeks, and then two to four weeks from there, on average. In Philly, typically, how long does it take for an eviction to take place? Good question. So let's start from the sixth day of the month, which is really when you serve the first eviction notice, saying you have 10 days to pay or quit. They send a serve a pay or quit notice. On the 15th day on our lease, on the 16th day, I'm sorry, if you haven't paid, we can formally file the eviction. At that point, um, depending on when the court systems are, the worst I've ever seen them backed up was like 30 to 40 days. Typically within 20 to 30 days you find a, um, a court date, and then from there, if you have the right attorney, which we do, the key is to, and this is a lot more detail and probably you can ask me after about it, we can talk about it, but you're looking to get a JBA most of the time, a judgment by agreement. That's the very short story of it is the money that you're trying to negotiate most of the time is a bargaining chip. Um, and I can talk to you about that later. But that's, so you're, you're looking at 30 to 45 days from the time of filing. And I've seen worse and I've seen better, but that's about right. Any other questions here? No? All right. Um, Managing the asset. Okay, this is, man, you guys are getting the full rundown on how Atlas Property Management works. I didn't realize these slides were in here. In fact, I didn't look at them until I said, Josh, I said to Josh, I was like, I'll do some talking tonight. So what this is, um, this might be boring, so stop me if it is, but these processes are all we do, and we have to be good at them. Um, and the clients in here know what we do. The, well, some of them do, some of them don't. But the rent collection process itself, I see landlords fail at this all the time. And I always ask a landlord before we um, go straight to an eviction, let me see where we are with this tenant. Because I need to know, it's, really, it's just as important that the landlord is consistent with the tenant if you expect consistency out of the tenant. Because 
I can't tell you how many times I get into conversations with landlords where they're fighting with their tenant because they, they broke their process just a little and the tenant realized, well, rent isn't negotiable. I can, now I have a bargaining chip. And all of a sudden the tables flip and the owner doesn't even know how they got there. Three months later, they haven't been paying rent. With us, it's not negotiable. Okay, I have to collect your money. So we have a very specific process in place. On the 23rd, 22nd of each month, you have an invoice that goes out. You're gonna receive it. It comes from Atlas Property Management. Between the first and the fifth of the month, your rent is due. If it is not there by the sixth day of the month, you now receive your pay or quit notice. This happens every month consistently. Between the sixth and the tenth day of the month, you receive three to four phone calls. I'm finding out where the rent is. You're going to get that phone call. Then you receive an automatic phone call with my voice. So that the people that are receiving that every month, they are sick of my voice, okay? Because it says, you have not paid your rent, pay. But you're on an auto dial in our office. Between the 10th and the 15th, you're receiving an email. On the 15th day of the month, we have somebody in our office that will come to your door and find out where is the money. It is all legal, it is the way it goes, and is we do everything legally possible to collect that rent consistently every single month. If you're managing a property and you're not doing that, you're not doing justice to what you need to do to your properties. That's the truth, because that is the process it takes just to collect rent consistently, and we get whether the residents want get the answer back that they want or not from us, they will receive a consistent answer. And if they receive a consistent answer, we will get consistent feedback and therefore there's, there's something there, there's structure there that everybody can rely on. It may not be the answer you want, but they know what to expect. Maintenance services, this is another, another beast of its own. Um, Christine and, and now Jill is, gonna, is working in, in a lot of this. <coughs> is un an unbelievable job in just inside this business. We have work orders, at the, I don't know, Jill, what was it today, 100 work orders? Jill was like, I'm gonna go through the work orders today. I need to clear some of these through and make sure everything is tightened up. We had 102 open work orders on any given week, okay? That means guys being dispatched. That means residents being coordinated with. We have it all internally inside of our computer sister, system documented. I will have some clients that will always say, hey, what's going on with this? I have to pull that up. I have to have an answer. I have to find out for you. If I can't do that over 700 properties, I'm not doing my job. Um, so this is all being coordinated. We have people on staff in house that are handling these problems for you inside of Turnkey Philadelphia or inside of Turnkey, inevitably inside of Atlas. Bookkeeping. This, think about it. We have several hundred owners that we deal with sending out wires every single week to make sure that their account statements every single month are accurate. We have people that deal with this inside of our office constantly looking at account statements, constantly dealing with the money that's coming in and coming out. So all of our ledgers internally on our computers have to be correct. Oversight, this is probably me. So um, anybody in my office knows exactly what's expected. Josh is not kidding, one minute late and, I, and there's a problem. And it has to be run like that, it, or I, I believe it does, inside my office. And then the complete management. I do everything I can to not, there was a client sitting in this room today and, I, and, and he specifically said, hey, call me. Call me if something comes up. And I, and I thought to myself for a second, I do everything I can, and, and, I, and I can respect that um, statement, but I don't want to have to call you and bother you. That's why you hired me. So it actually makes me a little bit feel like I'm not doing my job, but I can respect the statement that was asked of me. So I do my best to do the right thing so you guys don't have to think of it. That's really what my intentions are when I'm doing this. And I have to operate the business inside at a high level to do that. Um, so any, this is, okay, so if you're not managing your property like this, or doing any of this, you know, let me know and I guess we could help you out. So anybody have any questions about this process for management? No? Yeah, well, I, go ahead. The question I have is with the, um, the rental collections, mm -hmm. do you or have you worked with like with IRAs and things like that, self-directed IRAs, where mm -hmm. the funding can go directly to the account? It's an interesting question. Um, yes. And you, I know you guys through you, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay, you're okay. I've spoken to you guys on the phone this week. Yes. Now okay, I get it. I get it now. Um, to answer your question, yeah, Josh. Josh said yes. I don't know. We I, a lot of the money that goes out, it's directed to an account. It very well is, or could be, or can be an IRA. I don't pay much attention to that. I just know where it has to go. The actual function of the account um, would be something that Josh or Pam would know more about than I would. Um, I just know that the money has to go to that account particularly. So the answer is yes. I don't know which of my clients it is. I just know it has to go to that account. I have a question. Can yeah. you just go back for a second? Yeah. Now, as for you really got my attention when you talked about the, man the management perspective. So I understand this is what you do for turnkey. Mm -hmm. Do you take when you, other people call you 
and do that. So you all, do you also look for yeah. like another business right there where, where you manage other people's property? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, more than 50% of our clients are, are third party. They're not in-house. Um, yeah, so that was where Atlas started. But the reason we have Turnkey is we had all the pieces. It was like, we can wholesale, we can manage, we have the construction. We're like, we know what we're doing here. So that was so, will it ever change? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, I enjoy working with my clients. I enjoy, it gives us a really good pulse and a really good spectrum on the entire market because I have clients from all different walks of life and I can feel the market much better rather than, because with turnkey it's more of a controlled situation and we're steering the market. Whereas um, with third party I can see where the market is and who's making what mistakes. I could see a lot of mistakes in 2008 and a lot of clients in certain positions because of 2008. So.